This is Professor Triplett, and it's time to go over week two's assignment. We are going to create a Doric pillar, and uh, that's D-O-R-I-C. And here's an example. I'm in Photoshop, and the uh, main things that we need to be concerned with is uh, this base piece here, which we're going to create with a curve and a revolve and then just the top piece here. And the top piece is actually pretty simple. Um, I'll probably end up just doing that using uh, polygon primitives and just deleting a few faces. So it'll probably be easier to do it that way. All right, so why do I have 1080 by 1600 right here? Okay, well, we are going to bring this image into Maya and for it to look correct and have the right aspect ratio I like to use the actual dimensions of the image and put it on a plane that is uh, the same size as this or at least a multiple of it and I'll show you how that works alright so let's close this out let's minimize that let's get into Maya alright so let's go ahead and make a plane so we're going to go over to poly modeling and go ahead and just create a, a plane here and for the width I'm going to make that uh, 1080 and for the height I'm going to make this 1600 okay so you can see this is really huge um, maybe too big but it doesn't matter once we have the right aspect ratio um, we can scale uh, this plane to whatever size we want. So, all right, let's go ahead and just change these numbers to just one so we only have a single uh, polygon here. All right, next thing we want to do is we're going to put that image onto this plane. And to do that, I need to go to the Hypershade, which is in Windows, Rendering Editor, Hypershade. There's also usually a shortcut right here. So I'm going to just hit the shortcut. Now, inside of here is where we make materials. Uh, by default, you every scene has a Lambert material that it puts on any kind of geometry uh, that's in uh, created in the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and make one more Lambert material. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. I'm just going to click on it and you can see it's called Lambert 2 now. I'm going to double click on this and then what happened was in my attribute editor um, it popped up here. I'm going to name this M underscore ref and Doric. So the M is representative of material and then of course this is a reference material and what is it a reference of? Doric, a Doric pillar. All right, so let's go ahead and get that uh, that texture. So I click on this little box here, and then this thing will pop up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit File. And then after that, I have to come back over to the folder button here. And then I have to go find and track down that file that has the reference on it. So. I know it's in my pillars folder under reference and ref dork. There we go. So open. And so now uh, I have a diffuse texture or a color, sometimes called color texture, in my, uh, my material here. Um, if I select the material, of course, it comes to the, uh, the outer uh, most. Uh, level here, but you know you can put all kinds of different maps onto one material. And from here, I'm going to just click and select this plane, and I will right-click over my material icon right here, and just hold that right-click, and then drag up till it says Assign Material to Selection. All right, so now that material is on there, but we can't see it yet. Well, what do we need to do? We need to hit six on our keyboard. There we go. Now we're seeing something. But it doesn't look quite right and it looks a little bit stretched. Well, Maya does this wonderful thing and it tries to adjust the UVs for us so that uh, 
it thinks it knows the UV size that we want. And when I talk about UVs, basically what UVs are, uh, we can look at them through this little button right here up on this uh, on the poly modeling shell. I'm going to click on this. All right, so um, let's turn the grid off. What are UVs? UVs are basically a 2D representation of a 3D object. Now in this case, it's, a, it's just a flat plane, so there's really not much to see in the UVs. Um, and the UVs are actually really hard to see right now because it has this white picture in there. But uh, if I go ahead and go to, uh, let's see, she's probably under, now they've just recently changed it in this version. So, um, oh, there it is. That's what I want. So I can click that off. And now you can see this is my UVs. It's just a 2D representation of this plane. But what Maya did was because I made my plane a certain size, it tried to make the 2D representation the same size. But for a texture, we don't want that. We actually want this to be uh, the full size of our grid here. So I just turn the grid back on. So we need these edges or this edge to come back over to here. So to do that, what I have to do is right click and hold down and I go to UVs. So I just drag over to UVs and let go. And then I just got a marquee. So left click and marquee and drag this over. And now I am going to just, now I already have grid snap on. So if you don't have that on, put that on. Uh, and then I'm going to just use my uh, move tool. So I just hit W for the move tool. I'm going to use this move tool and I'm just going to drag it over to here. And voila, now my texture looks correct. Um, the reason why that works is that the, when the texture comes in to Maya, it automatically fills this whole uh, space here. Uh, even if it crunches it in, it fills the whole space. So we basically have to match that with our UVs, and that's what we just did. So that's all the UVs for this, uh, for this uh, project. Um, so it'll, uh, it'll be uh, less UVs for the rest of this, uh, this uh, session. So don't worry if you got a little confused there. That's okay. All right, so I just click, right click and hold and go to object mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this uh, 90 degrees. So it's gonna be up and down like so. And go into my channel box, I'll dial it in. There we go. Okay. Now, what I want, what I like to do is I like to put the base of this pillar right on the uh, the uh, zero grid. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring my move tool out, and just going to kind of go like that. All right. Now the next thing, just like we've always done. Uh, in the first project, remember we laid out primitives first. So I'm going to go ahead and just basically lay out primitives for what I want my pillar size to be. So I'm going to make a cylinder first. And I'm going to just say that the radius is going to be one meter. And then I'll say the height will be, oh, I don't know. For right now, let's just say half a meter. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale this so that this image that I have right here will basically fit to um, this size right here. Uh, the the uh, It'll fit this cylinder right here. Okay, so I'm just going to select this, hit R on the keyboard for scale, and I'm going to start scaling this down. Now, if I was a little bit smarter, so I'm just going to undo that, why don't I just change my pivot point? We know how to do that already. So um, you can hit insert, and if you don't have an insert on your keyboard, you can hit D. And I just hit D, and I'm going to move my pivot point down here, and then I'm going to hit D again, and it'll turn that off. Now I'll hit R on my keyboard, and now when I scale, it'll scale it closer to where I 
can actually make a comparison to see if this is about the size of the uh, of the base that I want. And I'm going to hit W, move it over a little bit, maybe scale it again, like so. Hit W, move it, and then I'm going to hit 4 on my keyboard. So what that's going to, actually, you know what, I'm not. Um, if I hit 4, I would get wireframe, but then I can't see my, my, uh, my um, <clears throat> picture, so I just hit six again so I can see it. Um, by the way, four gives you wireframe, five gives you flat shaded, and then six gives you uh, shaded texture. And if you have lights in the scene, you could hit seven, and that will show the lighting. So just wanted to go over that really quick. Okay, so from here, what I can do is hit D to insert. Uh, the pivot again and I'm just going to move that right to the center there, hit D and now I can just scale this a little bit more get it to the right size move it over again like so and that looks pretty good okay now I can get rid of this reference right now if I wanted to but I could use it later so um, considering that I probably could you know make this into the actual mid part of the pillar I'm just gonna go ahead and change the height to like maybe a thousand and just pull that up to about right there and then change the radius down a little bit so maybe 80 there we go that looks pretty close to my reference pretty close this is the stand-in for right now so why don't I name this thing, and we'll call this G underscore um, pillar underscore mid. So I know it's the middle part. This I'm going to name ref underscore Doric. I'm not putting, even though it is a, a geometry, I'm not putting a G in front of it because I never use these reference planes for anything other than just reference. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to actually uh, build uh, this curve right here using a Bezier curve. So I'm going to get into that in the next lesson.